talk about where we are and basically what do we need extra so in the last class as i mentioned that we had cli we were using netmiko module right inside our python script and then basically we were able to send cli right and we were able to do some logic using python statement right whatever the output i am getting back from the system or the router then basically on the basis of that output i can make some decisions using if else statement i can repeat the task or whatever you can do from the programming language you can do because now you have a netmiko module but as i explained in the last class it is too difficult to deal with the regular expressions to deal with a lot of things and there are some things which even cannot implemented in uh, through netmiko then we have discussed about snmp protocol and as i mentioned snmp is make basically for management of network device but with respect to configuration it doesn't have that much functionalities right and that is why we need something else so now in today's class we will be seeing what exactly that new thing is right but to understand that new thing we need to understand few concept one of the concept is encoding what is the meaning of encoding let's try to understand this diagram first we have this computer right maybe the name of this computer is computer a you can say and we have a our character which is mr rahul right mr rahul understand english as you all know and at the end of the code you all know this also that computer understand only numbers and basically in this numbers also they understand a specific form of the number which is binary and at the end of the day whatever calculation this computer is doing doesn't matter if it is processing a video file if it is processing a audio file or a picture or basically it is doing just a simple calculation of two numbers it is just rearranging these binary numbers right that is it whatever complex calculation computation you think in your mind at the end of the day this computer is just rearranging the numbers and that is it which numbers binary numbers because at the end of the day computer can store only this ones and zeros it is as simple as that so when mr raul says that hi mr computer how are you it is quite possible that maybe you have some program here who can understand this and but at the end of the day you all know that computer understand ones and zeros so somebody somewhere is there who is going to convert this information into binary number right so if i think a little bit more about this then maybe that number which are coming is how hi mr computer how are you and if somebody convert them in the form of ones and zeros then there must be some way right through which i can come across these numbers it means that my english language the entire language can be represented with ones and zeros very very interesting right and believe me there is a system there is absolutely a system which is there which can convert your english alphabets or whatever the uh, symbols you see on your keyboard every symbol on your keyboard can be converted into ones and zeros very very interesting right so uh, when you send this message to mr computer hi mr computer how are you and maybe it is replying back with this ones and zeros there is no comparability raul doesn't understand much from this mr computer doesn't understand much from this it means that we need something which can transform which can uh, which can represent this information into ones and zeros and we need something which can represent this ones and zeros in normal language maybe computer is saying i'm fine right but i cannot understand this maybe there, there must be something which can convert this back to english so that mr rahul can understand it believe me there is a system right for example suppose i just say because computer understand numbers so i am saying that i will be representing a with say 000 i will be representing b with say 001 c with maybe 010 right and maybe t with maybe 111 you must be thinking mr vishnu why t after c it should be d i just need to make a word maybe i want to make a word like cat right cat is a normal english word but when you define now you know a way to represent a with this number you can represent even cat with the numbers right you just need to write instead of c you are going to write co10 which is right here 
instead of a you are going to write 0 0 0 which is right here right instead of t you are going to write 1 1 1 so if you send computer this message this is basically the representation of c a t it is as simple as that right in the next board i want to exactly showcase you this so there is a scheme i think you all understand that scheme right that scheme says that basically you can represent a with this number which number zero one zero 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 one and believe me if you convert this number into decimal number it is going to be 65 this system says that you can represent b with zero zero one one zero one one zero very very interesting right if this is the case then you have you can represent a with this b with this it means that if mr rahul send a message which contains only a at the end of the day ascii which is a representation style is going to convert this number into this right and maybe the computer is returning back this number to you but when it goes to mr rahul right it can be represented with V, right? Why? Because through ASCII, you know that if something is with this number, it can be represented by B. If A is coming and going into the computer, it can be represented by V, uh, uh, basically this number. So ASCII is there to represent something. It is as simple as that, right? And if you are representing A with something else, then basically you are saying that I am encoding A right with 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 it means that this s key is just nothing but a technique which we call as encoding it is as simple as that right if you're trying to be uh, if you're just little little bit philosophical just try to understand that at the end of the day what is this a right when we say uh, a from our uh, uh, if we pronounce a basically a is representing this uh, this one right this sound it means that we are doing encoding here also. This A and B is encoded, right? Or basically it's a type of encoding which is representing some sounds, right? As simple as that. So ASCII or ASCII is a type of data representation or encoding. By this time, you must understand what is the meaning of encoding, right? If I say, just try to understand. If I say English language is encoded in Roman script, you would, you have to agree with me, right? Because whatever I write, right, whatever I say, uh, suppose I say cat, right, I am using some symbols to represent my, the, the cat, right, the, the, the word which I just announced, right. It means that the language or the script I am using to represent cat is actually the Roman script. Or I can say my English language, entire English language is encoded in Roman script, right. What about Hindi language? Hindi language has its own script. For example, I will write a, right? And this script is known as Devanagari. As simple as that. Very, very interesting. So by this time, you all should understand the meaning of what the meaning of encoding. Let's move to the next board, right? And here you go. This is the diagram which I have showcased you on the first page also. Now this is really, really important. Because believe me, I will change this picture with Netcon, Yang, and JSON or XML. If you get this, you can understand why do we need these three new concepts. So guys, what is happening here? We have two human beings. I'm talking about English language. I think you all understand this and you must be thinking after reading this board or after understanding that, that I know each and everything about this board, but believe me, People have so much confusion when we talk about netcon JSON or basically netcon XML and Yang, right? So if you get this board clearly, you won't be having any doubt with respect to the new concepts. That why those concepts are there? Why do we need them at the first place? Just try to understand. We have Rahul, we have Anjali, right? Both are human beings, and they want to communicate with each other. Rahul has something right right and he wants to express it to anjali similarly anjali want to express something to uh, rahul right whatever it is and for that they need a specific language right 
and i can say that rahul and anjali may be several meters apart so they have the medium right what medium they have they have air as a medium because you know if rahul can say something right and of course rahul is gifted with the voice right anjali has the voice but to uh, to make sure that vo that voice can reach from rahul to anjali we need certain medium and that medium is actually your air it is as simple as that our sound waves can travel over this medium which is air if you remove this air basically there is no medium and you cannot talk with each uh, with each other right at least with the sound very very interesting so basically there is no problem with respect to medium but now the question arises how mr rahul can deliver his messages whatever going inside him how he's going to explain all those things to anjali and you all know that we have language for that and we have suppose english language mr uh, mr rahul understand english miss anjali understand english and if they both understand english there should not be any problem but try to go a little bit deeper into english right suppose mr rahul want to send a message hi or want to say say hi anjali how are you right then that message should be represented with something at least that message should mean something at least right suppose rahul says nuts to loves rahul fruits eat and very very interesting sentence and rahul is just saying this thing right or maybe if there is not an air medium maybe we have a network here then basically rahul can send a message just like this nuts to loves rahul fruits eat and and when this message reaches to anjali it is going to be problem right anjali will be understanding the message because she can read it why she can read it because it is written in english script because rahul is using roman language so there is no doubt about it that a b c d or a to z everything is good but if you understand a to z it doesn't mean that you understand english although any book whatever you have read till now right it is going to be written with the help of this 26 letters right if it is an english book right you all know about it but if i say that if you understand 26 letters of uh, english you know all english it is not a good statement right because first thing first from these alphabets you need to make some words from those words you need to make some sentence and rahul has made a one sentence but the problem is rahul is using exactly those 26 words rahul is using sorry uh, alphabet rahul is using exactly the roman script but still it is not making any sense it means that only script cannot give you the meaningful information if you say 26 alphabets or basically if you combine them then it is not going to make sense unless there is a specific structure you should know that what words to use when what should be the order of those words right very very interesting and who is going to guide us those words this grammar is going to guide us those words because grammar says that what should come first right it also says that you should be using proper words like for rahul it should be he right for anjali it should be she and so on there is too much grammar i am not going to talk about most of the things here but you you understand my concept that if you have a script of english if you have a knowledge of a script of english it doesn't mean that you understand english because you all know but but you also know that we should be learning these things first thing first to begin our english journey but as we go uh, ahead as we move ahead we need to understand grammar also very very interesting right and if we understand grammar then basically rahul is writing the gra grammatically correct sentence which say rahul loves to eat fruits and nuts very very interesting now right now anjali because anjali knows grammar anjali understand roman script then basically we can say that yes anjali got the message from rahul right but if rahul speak in this way it doesn't have any grammatical structure although english wise it is correct words wise it is correct but it is not correct with respect to grammar and that's why anjali didn't make much from this from the first sentence but from the second sentence she understand everything right 
So if I go a little bit uh, more deeper, then I can say that English is kind of a protocol. Why protocol? It is a language. We all understand it is a language. But this language has some rules defined by this grammar, right? And also you understand that protocol is also some rules, right? For example, if we have two routers, R1 and R2, and if we want to run OSPF between them, we need to make sure, right? That we configure properly. And if we have configured this interface properly, then basically it is the responsibility of OSPF to make sure that the neighborship comes up, right? Why? Because there are some rules and regulation in OSPF and that is why, and OSPF always obey them. And that is why we say OSPF is a protocol, right? As simple as that. Rules means protocol. And here, basically, English is also a language which is bound with some rules. If you remove this grammar from here or maybe the script from here, it doesn't make any sense. All the script will only come into picture when you are writing something, when you're expressing your views with the help of uh, the script or writing something, right? But grammar is very, very important in spoken English as well as in written English. But at the end of the day, it is a language which is bound with some rules. And we can say Rahul and Anjali is communicating over a language which is English. And we can say it is a protocol also because it obeys rule. It is as simple as that. This example is going to be very, very uh, important in understanding few new concepts today, right? It's already been 25 minutes. If you have any question in your mind, although we are again very philosophical today, right? Now, if you have any doubt, any question, please you can stop me. You can, uh, just, just raise your hand, and I'm uh, I will be happy to answer. Now, we have understood whatever the basic things we need to understand: net conf, rest conf, and so many things. But now, as you all know, that we will be building a system. We are actually building an API, right? And you all understand what is API because in the last class I mentioned that just remember that library example, just remember the example of the restaurant, right? Basically in library, we put the robot and that robot was taking instruction and it is going inside the library and coming up with the book. You do not need to worry about and be calling this robot as an API, right? And restaurant also, basically they give you just the menu, you order that, and then basically it's the responsibility of the waitress to go and come back with their order. It means that this menu, you do not need to understand the complexity of library or the restaurant. It is as simple as that. I have given you the example of power grid also or electric sockets also. Right? Very, very easy. So we are developing this API and that is why we are learning so many things. We are thinking philosophically. So for example, now suppose Rahul and Anjali are miles apart and there is a medium between them, maybe the wireless medium, right? And there are many technologies and one of uh, such technologies basically your uh, electromagnetic waves which can, which can go over these uh, uh, wireless area, right? So basically what Rahul has, Rahul has is the, the walkie talkie with him. Anjali has the walkie talkie with him, her, sorry, right? And through this walkie-talkie, they can talk and the communication is very, very simple but because whatever you speak on this walkie-talkie, this walkie-talkie will be placed, the, your data on this wireless medium with the help of a wave on a particular frequency, maybe say 100 megahertz frequency. And Anjali is going to tune her walkie-talkie at 100 megahertz so that she can hear. But there are some rules also with this communication. What are those rules? First thing first, because if you are talking on a walkie-talkie, you cannot listen, right? And that is why you are saying, hi, Miss Anjali, how are you? And then you say, over, right? And Anjali understand that when she received a message, right? And whenever, they, whenever she listened over, it means that uh, uh, Rahul is done with the sentence. And now it's Anjali's turn. And Anjali will be saying, Rahul, I am doing fine. How are you? Over. Right? You all know that. So basically, this communication has some rules. Now, we will be adding few things here. If I compare, then don't you think that this walkie-talkie is exactly like an API? And you must be thinking, how come, Mr. Vishnu? 
because anjali is a complex system <laughs> rahul is a complex system you do not know what is going on inside right but to communicate with anjali we have this walkie talkie and that is why basically we are saying that i am interested in knowing that how anjali is and anjali is replying it right it is as simple as it through what through this walkie talkie it is as simple as that now other rules because they are many miles away then we need a transport and what transport we are using we are using the transport which is the electromagnetic waves at 100 megahertz speed sorry at frequency it is as simple as that right interesting now the most important thing is whatever mr rahul is saying that message should have some structure right it should be grammatically correct otherwise there is going to be problems so if two human beings wants to communicate with each other then basically we need some transport we need uh, this is kind of an api right and then basically we are using a message which is using maybe any script maybe english or the roman or the devnagri or whatever but the point is that it should be understood by both of them right really interesting let's talk about because we need to develop this system we need to develop because if we are if you want to develop this api based system then we should have these two walkie talkie and these two walkie talkie should understand the message if they do not understand the message there is going to be problem and that is why we need to have some smartness in this walkie talkie so when the message goes out it should have some structure it should be arranged in a manner so that when it received at the end it should be understandable by this the other walkie talkie it is as simple as that right now let's replace this human beings with computers because at the end of the day we will be doing this right these two computers are far away we have uh, some transport and what is the transport we are using we are using transport which is our actually uh, we are using a transport which is our network tcp ip network right and you must be saying that mr vishnu we all know that how basically a packet can go from here to here but now i am not worrying about how the packet is moving from here to here i am worrying more about a new protocol which is totally dedicated to communicating or basically configuring this device very very interesting right this device can be a computer can be a router or can be anything right how i can configure this device how can i get the management information from this device right and that is why i am developing a new protocol so if that is the case if i want to configure this device then basically this device should offer me something maybe an api through which this guy can communicate right and this guy how can this guy can uh, how this guy or the router can communicate it can communicate easily because the transport is already there the tcp ip network is already there but yes they need to develop a new protocol or new language which is understood by this guy as well as this guy why because now they want to configure it right i'm not bothering about the packeting because this is the responsibility of tcp ip which is already there right now i'm looking something more than sending message i am trying to develop a new protocol which is understood with, by this guy and whatever i say that configure your interface network interface with this ip address and this guy automatically compare uh, configure and then send me the reply back and these new messages should be arranged in a manner these should new message should follow some rules and that is why i'm calling this as a new protocol right <laughs> you will be getting most of it when i get on the next board but before that if you guys have any doubt any problem please do ask anybody okay at least tell me are you able to hear me yes perfect okay so after reading encoding after understanding why do we need grammar after understanding basically the walkie talkie example i am coming what do we need extra so now this is our the this is the case which we are going to understand we will be having the program or the script which we will be writing in python just try to understand this right and then we will be having the network devices maybe routers and the switches right these routers and the switches are going to be many miles away but this should not be a problem because we have protocols like ssh and uh, http which can be used as transport so there is no doubt about it that from my script the message can go out and can reach here 
there is no doubt about it right but as you all know cli as an api is already there right snmp as an api is already there but these two uh, apis were not easing our job basically it is complicating our job right we need to use regular expressions we need to do so many steps we need to put the output in the file then file to a dictionary and so many things you have seen that in the previous programs right so it is not the case that this complete system of router was not having apis yes those were having apis but those apis were not fulfilling our requirement and that is why cisco's people who are working on this router they understood that the problem is really really intense here world is moving towards automation right if i give you a sentence from a very reputed person right inside google that person says that if a protocol right or if a feature cannot be automated then basically that feature should not be there right so whatever you see bgp osp or whatever the service offered by these devices right if they are, they cannot be automated then basically in the coming world uh, basically in the coming time they are not going to exist because in the coming time machines are going to talk to machines we are we will be there to write code on them and maybe code can be written by somebody else also but it doesn't mean that we are not required but that is a topic of another discussion but what i want to say is that if your feature cannot be automated that feature should not be there on device and the programmers who have built this router maybe this is a cisco router and cisco has come up with some pretty cool apis right Although most of the years the CLI and MP were there and there was no change, but in last few years there is a change and they have come up with a new API. Believe me, this API is totally dedicated to network automation. If it is dedicated to network automation, it means that if some script communicating with this application programming interface it is going to give result in such a manner that this script can understand it without any hesitation previously cli is for human beings we were just mimicking human beings through our scripts but now the new api right it is really solid that it can understand and it is sending the response in an appropriate or basically that that, that, that manner which is structured so that your it so that your python script can understand it and that is why i have given again this example english if your programmer script right wants to talk to this api you need something between them you need some language between them right and that language should not be english by the way right because English is for human being and that is why we need a new language or protocol if I say English is a protocol it is it is correct statement right because English follows some rule and if I am saying that your network program uh, program and network device needs something between them which is a language because they are talking to each other then there, there is a protocol right but that protocol ob should obey some rules from this grammar should op should have some script so that basically if you are saying that mr router i want to configure ip address on your zero slash one interface you cannot say in plain english right over this protocol you will be representing this statement that mr router i want to configure your zero slash one interface with this ip address and that is why you are going to need the script and that script whatever you are sending the sentence it should have some grammar in the next board what i'm going to do I will be replacing English grammar and Roman script with some different words. Just try to understand them, right? What we are doing, guys, at the end of the day, this complete system, we do not need CLI, we do not need SNMP, right? So what Cisco people has done, or basically other guys has done, they are opening another API, and they are giving the name of this API as NetConf API, which is kind of a protocol or just a language. And if you are making a protocol or a language, right, then it obeys some rules. It 
should be represented with something, right? So basically there are many people who have developed this. So what they have done is this entire system, this entire router, which is a complex thing, right? It is running OSPF, BGP, it is having so many chips, it is having packet processing and so many processes, so many hardware, software is running into it. I do not care about it, right? I am interested in that if I ask you something, you reply me in a particular format so that my program can understand your output, right? The second thing is, if I send you to configure something, you have to configure that if my messages are correct and you are going to send me the result that have you configured or not. Maybe if I send you 100 lines of code, or basically command lines, right? You need to configure it. And if you are not able to configure one of them because of some issue or any problem, then basically you need to roll back. It should not be the case that you have configured 99 uh, command line or basically commands and you have not configured the one command. I want all the 100 commands. If any one of them fail, just roll back. Otherwise, what I need to do, I need to log in into this router and write no at the front of each and every command, which I do not want to do. I am working on automation. I want to make my life easier, not difficult. Right? As simple as that. So, your routers, guys, basically, who is developing this router, they have uh, hide all the complexities, just like basically they were previously giving you CLI access, SNMP objects. Now they are giving another api which is netconf api netconf is a language or the protocol you can say which should be understandable by this router and of course if you have implemented this netconf this router is going to understand the netconf and maybe it is written by there are 70000 employees in cisco and maybe suppose 10000 are responsible for making new routers then some of them are working on the, this automation piece and basically it's a huge effort whoever is doing on this router but they are making your router programmable why programmable because now instead of cli you can your script can directly talk to them and ask them about a specific information or configure it fully maybe one device two device ten thousand of devices in a minute very very interesting right but you all understand that, uh, uh, Mr. Vishnu, I agree your point that basically Netcon uh, protocol is implemented inside these networking devices. And then basically uh, 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 we are calling them as the APIs, right? Or Netcon API. I understand that. But what about my script? I am the single person here. I do not have power like Cisco. I mean, many people. How I am going to use it? Because from our previous conversation, one thing is clear. If two person are talking, over a language, then both should understand that, right? There is no problem with respect to networking devices because there are so many people, right? Who have developed this netcom protocol, but what about this client? What about my script? I am the single person, how I'm going to develop this netcom protocol. And that is why, that is where your Python comes into picture. I understand that you are alone when you start writing your program, but believe me, there is a huge community of people which contributes in python library so what has happened you just need to import one library into your code and believe me your code will understand netcon how easy it is you do not need to define every message of this net netcon protocol otherwise it is as good as you are teaching your program is english because at the end of the day net no, netcon protocol is just like an english language right and if you want to use then basically you need to teach your program english you cannot do that it is a huge thing right but we have a huge community and that is why suppose previously also you did not need to learn many things about regular expression what you were doing there is a huge community which is developing this regular expression module you just need to import that regular expression module into your program and that is it just use them router wise there were so many people they have developed netcon Program wise, you're alone, but there is a huge community of people. You just need to import a particular library, and this library name is NC Client. Netcon Client. Believe me, at the end of the day, what is happening? Everything is on this router, right? And this is behaving as server. So a Netcon protocol is working just like a server and client manner, just like your TCP, right? 
or maybe just like your HTTP also, right? So server is here, your client is here, how you are going to bring the client inside your network program, you just need to import library, which is NCC client or NC client, right? And before that, you need to use pip. Pip is Python uh, package manager to, to, to download NCC client from the internet because no, because very few people, the people like us who are interested in learning network automation are going to use it, right? Everybody cannot use it because because of the expertise, right? And that is why it is not included in the standard library of Python because all people are not going to use it, right? And that is why we need to just we need to just use the work of some other people who have already come contributed. We are going to install NCC client in our system, right? Or the Python. And now my client or my program is fully capable of sending netconf message. It can say, Mr. Server, I want to config your gigabit zero slash zero interface with this IP address, with this mask, right? And then server says, okay, the message come with this protocol, netconf, right? This is the message inside this. Protocol is netconf. I understand netconf. I have enabled APIs, netconf APIs. So this will reach at the netconf port. And then basically your complete, you do not need to know about the complete system, right? You are just sending this message. This router will be following all the message. It is going to configure it zero slash one interface or 0 slash 0 interface with 1.1.1.1 slash 24. And then it is going to return the message that, okay, I have done that. And believe me, this message has some structure which this client can understand easily. Very, very interesting. Now, basically you can ask this router also, can you give me information about the CPU usage or an interface? What is the current traffic on the interface? And you, your program can take uh, the decision on the basis of that. Believe me, all these things you can do with the NetMiko Paramico also, but there are many things which you cannot do, which can be done using this NetCon, which is a new API offered by Cisco. Previously, they were just offering CLI and SNMP, but now they are offering NetCon API also, which you can utilize with your program. This is more program friendly as compared to human friendly. And that, that is why you, if you are doing automation, basically your machine or script is talking with your router. You are not talking. And that is why basically we want to make you, we, 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 you do not want to make you sit and configuring 1000 routers. We want that a script can do on, on your behalf. You just need to check the results, whether it's done or not. Very, very interesting. So with respect to NetConf, you all understand that there should be a protocol uh, which should be running between your program and the networking device and the program is netcon but you all know this language is just like an english because if i say english is a protocol if i'm saying network conf is a protocol both are protocol it means that they obey some rules if they want to obey some rules means they should have a script also what is that this is this is not the script of your uh, this is not the python script i'm talking about the script of english language which is roman how you are going to send the message inside this netcon how you are going to represent those message what should be the encoding remember guys the second topic of today was encoding right how you are going to encode this message for example simply i can say that mr router configure gigabit zero slash zero interface with this ip address but how you are going to represent so that this networking device can understand cisco guys has developed this standard that they are going to understand if you send the message in a particular format that format is actually your xml this is just like a script english script is roman hindi script is devanagari netconf script is xml as simple as that this is the most close analogy which i can do right which 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 i which i can think of and that is why people have a lot of doubt because they do not understand it with that where exactly why do we need xml we need to represent netcon messages or data because at the end of the day data is going from your script to the networking device and that networking device has to work on data and that data needs to be represented with something and that something is actually your xml it is as simple as that but as i mentioned that you cannot send uh, message in unstructured way right just like the uh, means if i say rahul banana eats 
right although you are intelligent guy you understand that this means rahul eats banana but if there is no structure there is no grammar there are no rules associated with the, how we are going to represent the data then it's a problem and that is why your grammar is important right or the dictionary is important the, the word dictionary of words or this grammar is very very important right you cannot write anything anywhere right because this router understand that if a message comes in a structured format in netcon protocol then i will be replying then i will be obeying with respect to that message otherwise i won't do that right because it is going to be very very difficult for me at the end of the day to understand anything else right and that is why router says that if your message comes with this grammar with this script i will be obeying it that grammar guys here is your yang right very very interesting okay at the end of the day i have mentioned one more thing here that the transport is ssh and we have been discussing about it right there must be some transport for sure because at the end of the day the, your script and this router can be miles away right if that is the case why to reinvent the wheel we all know that we have a uh, transport protocol which is already working pretty fine transport protocol is ssh what is the meaning here the meaning is means suppose if netcon yang xml is not there then how i am going to interact with this router the first thing first is there must be some protocol which can take our messages from my script towards this networking device and that protocol was ssh because first thing first we need to make a ssh connection to the router and what router is going to give me if i make an ssh connection to a router it is going to give me the command prompt and i can write whatever commands i can so it means that it is giving me the api in the form of cli it is as simple as that right but sometimes we are not interested in the cli so believe me ssh has other options like suppose i want to log in into a uh, router or basically a uh, a computer and i am only interested in just transferring the file copying the file and you all understand that there is a protocol like F F sftp or secure copy protocol right believe me that protocol is also working on ssh so it means that it is up to you what do you want once you log in into this router you want this one means command line prompt or you want to transfer the files interesting and basically these are known as subsystems of ssh so initially you make uh, initially you make connection over ssh ssh is a secure protocol you all know but it is up to you you can program it that whether you want a cli or you want sftp and believe me over this ssh you can write another subsystem which is your netcon another protocol right because cli was not suitable for network automation right and netmico is behaving that behavior mimicking just the 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 the, the human being we are writing another protocol and once we make ssh connection into this rou router we are not going into the cli mode we are not going into the sftp mode we are going into the netconf mode after making ssh connection we will be into the netconf mode where we can send netconf messages represented by xml and a script and modeled by yang which is a grammar very very interesting right so to to complete this board basically your netconf protocol works on top of ssh we do not need to uh, invent another protocol to just make a connection ssh was already there but yes inside ssh there were subsystems and we can choose from these subsystems right whether to go to cli sftp or netcon so if your nc client here which is actually your netcon client right is initiating a netcon connection with this router what is actually happening behind the scene first thing first ssh will be there right first first thing first ssh is going to be there first thing first ssh connection will be there and on top of it netcon protocol will be working so netcon work on top of ssh somebody in the hindi class asked me this question if you compare it that which osi model your netcon is working so basically you all understand ssh is a uh, application layer uh, uh, 
protocol and it is working on top of it so basically this is also an application program uh, application layer uh, 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 protocol which is using ssh as a transport service interesting now let's move to the next board where i will explain the same thing with the another example now i have replaced netconf with restconf another protocol so when these guys cisco guys were working on uh, many guys were working on this netcon protocol so basically you all know previously we have cli then we have uh, we have snmp and now we are not interested in both of them right we are doing some modern network programming network automation programming so basically they have offered another thing which is netcon which we studied in last board but one more thing they were doing right netcon protocol was working on top of ssh but this restcon protocol which they have built just like netcon right they are hiring the complexity of this system and just offering you rest apis but the interesting portion of rest config was that it was working on a transport it is it was working on a transport protocol which is http not ssh right what is the use basically everybody understand http nowadays right because you all have made connection you know that basically when you when you uh, open your browser and we, when you go on a particular site there is a get request which goes from the http and it takes some data from it it is as good as getting data from the router also but yes http is basically for web applications right but believe me your restcon protocol which is another api given by cisco routers the modern routers right and it was not choosing ssh as its base protocol or transport protocol is for choosing http because people are more more uh, what we can say familiar with http than ssh right they like everything uh, to be as a url for example just try to understand we are just writing a url to get the uh, interface statistics from the router and you will be getting it right it is as simple as that i will be showcasing you this in maybe next or next or next or next class right that how we can use uh, the netconf and restconf to get all these parameters right or configure something on this router and then basically sky is the limit spend more time you will be more proficient but my job is to enable you on all these technologies to make sure you understand them well to make sure you understand the why behind them so that you cannot get you do not get confused right now restcon just like netconf is on top of the uh, 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 http protocol and now this is just like a english language and basically this language needs some grammar and believe me for this we have the same grammar so we do not need to understand grammar the different grammar for restcon and notcon right if we understand yang then basically we have but, but for english language and for hindi language the grammar is different right even the scripts are different but here script is different but rescon protocol say that you can use xml script data representation method or data encoding method and you can also use one another form basically you can also use json you can use the xml or you can use another one which is yaml right it is up to you which script you want to use it is up to you, you want to use a b c d or whatever anything else but the grammar is going to be same very very interesting what is the difference difference between restconf and netconf at the end of the day they are apis they, these are going to use in network automation right there is a one significant difference between uh, uh, the restconf and netconf most of the times we will be using netconf when we have to deal with the network the entire network 1000 2000 devices but if we are dealing with one or two devices or three devices then believe me uh, you do not need to go into the complexities of the netconf basically restconf will do and it is much much easier as compared to netcon protocol but why the case we can discuss in some other class but now this is the time to understand one interesting thing and before that it is already one hour guys can and uh, if you do, if you guys have any doubt any curious question or any question in your mind please do ask right but i would like to answer a question from the hindi class which was a very very interesting question and they were saying explain sd wan how it is automated so if you understand if you if you heard about this word what is software defined van previously if we have different sites right suppose this is my data center then basically these are my different sites 
site means that this is my bombay site and uh, this is another site in the bombay remote site you can say and then if this is in delhi this is in karnataka and maybe this is in kashmir suppose right so what is going to happen you need to create a van network amongst them van networks mean van links right with using service provider uh, uh, services and then basically you run ipsec on top of them to secure your data and then basically this way your data center and your remote sites are connected and we call this network as sd wan network right sorry we call this network as the wan network but now with sd wan what they have done is they have created this entire network using softwares and basically you can manage this entire network using software you can configure this entire network whatever you want in whatever manner you want through software you do not need to log in into this device basically there is a uh, there is a device which we call as v manage right v manage can talk to all of your wan routers just like our network automation script so just understand this is kind of a script of a big program and basically it is making the connections uh, okay let me show the connection with the green color so they make sense so here you go this connection this connection this connection to all of your van devices and these connections are actually your netconf connections very very interesting once you have a network netconf connection between this v manage to your router then you can do whatever you want you can you can poll you can ask whatever statistics from this device you can configure this device maybe bgpos whatever you want to do ipsec whatever you can do it right and basically it is happening over the netcon protocol and you all know sd1 is implemented all over the world many customers are using it it is an epitome of network automation we have done it right it is already there you can think now that basically now i can have another script right just like a script and i can also control yes you can also do that right and that is why you must have seen that on these routers you need to enable first ssh if ssh is there then basically uh, first connection you all know that ssh is going to be there you all should understand the meaning of how dnac is doing this right you all know that cisco has an appliance the name is dnac if i re, uh, if i if i leave about if i leave sd access what dnac is doing right it has the capability to automate your entire network infrastructure router switches doesn't matter it can communicate to them again over this network uh, netcon protocol and if netcon protocol is there then basically you can configure this device on whatever right whatever the maximum capabilities of new age network automation is there we are getting this you can also say that now mr vishnu i can also create a script or a system from where i am controlling all this thing right so this is developed by many people many functionalities are there of network automation and people are using it it is as simple as that interesting right so guys if you have any doubt any question please let me know till now if you have any question coming to your mind with respect to restcon yang jason please do let me know okay okay at least tell me am i audible or not yes yes perfect so mr prashant Uh, all good you are able to understand where exactly netcon prestcon piang and jason are going to fit yes 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 perfect gomati ji all good yes yeah perfect now this is the last board no, oh, oh. yeah go ahead one question why uh, any specific reason why they choose yang and jason Uh, because uh, they can be used uh, html and all right yeah so basically if i say you then this html or existing representation techniques right these are more friendly towards the web application so if you get something in html your browser can be able to render it and it will showcase all the page right but now we are talking about configuring a network device we are talking about getting information from a network device we are talking about managing a complete network infrastructure and believe me people have must have thought about that why can't we use html but 
HTML was not capable of doing all these things. And that is why there is a need to choose something new. And believe me, these JSON and XML are, are not only for the networking, uh, uh, networking things, but these representational languages were so powerful that they can be used in the networking devices context also to represent something, right? But yes, for Yang, basically we need to develop a, a different model because we want to uh, guide the grammar that how the messages should look like so that these networking devices can end. But your question is correct that why couldn't we use HTML because it is not fit for network automation or network devices. Okay, Mr. Prakash. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. So last board of today's session, right? Uh, I have asked this because this is this is what I have explained in last to last class. This program, right? This program was just doing nothing. It is configuring uh, uh, this is your script and basically it was configuring your router your router particular interface right which was maybe zero slash zero which is written into a particular file right and it's my request to you all of you that please try to run this in your setup right and you must be thinking that my why mr vishnu why we need to run this because just now you said that cli or snmp approach was bad and we in this program we are using cli approach we are using netmico we are just mimicking the user why are you saying this then i will let you know that currently maybe i'm not sure but 30 to 50 percent of the entire networking infrastructure is still running on the old devices which do not support restcon for netcom which are the new mode of network automation in that case you need to understand this kind of programming right but believe me, the structure, whether I'm using netcom, restcom, you will be amazed to see that the program type is going to be looking the uh, program is going to uh, look the same. Why? Because we will be following the same structure, object, classes, and whatever we have talked about it, right? In the Python. The only the libraries are going to be changed, the methods, whatever the for loop or whatever the logic is going to be remain, uh, logic is going to remain the same, right? But here, why I've opened this program again, because I wanted to showcase you that at the end of the day, we were just creating this list. And in this list, every item was dictionary. I am appending the dictionary from this for loop. And the beauty of that, this program is, I'm not sure whether you have noticed or not, I am not running for loop twice, right? Means for configuration, different loop, and for making connection, different loop. I have configuration as well as other parameters in the same loop, just have a look at it this is making the connection and basically from the same list i am getting the interfaces ip address and the mask interesting just have a look at it just try to run this in your uh, in your environment and by the way if you guys have any doubt with respect to how you are going to create your environment uh, it is very very easy i have explained it in the in, in the initial sections if you want i can exactly send you where i have explained all these things so that you can go and check it okay but it is my request to all of you that create this setup this setup was really really easy right you just need to run uh evng machine in your laptop right just have some routers and switches in it right just put them whatever mode you like bridge mode or net mode and from your machine basically your vs code whenever you write the program you can interact with these devices very very simple right and if you are not even if you are not doing this then basically there is another approach basically on uh, uh, developer.cisco.com there are some devices which are already available to you so if you are sitting here your script and these are the public these are on the public ip addresses so you can make connection to them i will showcase you in tomorrow's class but one request to all of you just try to do this right if you do this, then basically you can understand the nitty gritties. And it is very, very simple because now you have understanding of all the things in the world. You know Linux, you know Python uh, you know, logics. You understand each and every program. You just need to now call the work of others in your program and just see that how it works. As simple as that, right? Having said that, this is what I wanted to explain you in today's class. See you in tomorrow's class where we will starting our journey with respect to netconf restconf and uh, maybe i will be covering netconf and yang in one class and restconf and basically json in another class that is it right
because it is just like an ocean it is it, it is it is quite big so we will not go into much of the nitty gritties because we now understand why they are needed whatever is needed for our project for our work we will be just utilizing it and that is it but the important piece is we now understand how and where this netcon press con is coming into the picture right if you guys have any doubt any question you are most welcome to ask otherwise see you tomorrow in our next class have a nice night ahead guys bye for now